All right, so here are my slope deflection equations. I've got six of them. And if I look at these slope deflection equations, you will notice that I have nine unknowns with six equations, which means I need three more equations. And those three equations are going to come from equilibrium. And the first place to look for equilibrium is at each joint. So if I look at, boom, way back over here in my exploded view, if I look at the free joints, the joints that are free to rotate and move around, I wanna look at joint B and joint C, and I wanna look at the rotation. I wanna sum moments about each of these joints for the equilibrium equation. So here, if I look at some of the moments about joint B, I would get MBA plus MBC equals zero. And then similarly for joint C, if I sum moments about joint C, I would get MCB plus MCD equals zero. So there's two more equations. I need one more. And that third equation is gonna come from some of the forces in the horizontal because I have side sway in my structure. And if I just look at the whole structure itself, and if I do some of the forces in the horizontal for the entire structure, I would get the resultant of the distributed load plus AX plus DX equal to zero. And now it looks like I just introduced two other unknowns into here, but really AX and DX are related to the internal shears and then by equilibrium again by internal moment. So if I look at my exploded view again over here, I could look at an equilibrium or some of the forces in the horizontal for joint A, and that would tell me that AX is equal to negative VA B. And here, similarly, if I look at joint D, this would also tell me some of the forces in the horizontal equal to zero for joint D. This would tell me that DX is equal to negative VDC. And hopefully all this back and forth isn't making you dizzy. This equation is just 108 kips minus VAB minus VDC equal to zero. And then it still looks like I have two unknowns, two more unknowns from this equation and not a system. But, but I can, I have two more equations to relate this to the moments, to the end moments. If I can relate them to the end moments, then I'm good. And here, my end moments, I can relate to the shears by equilibrium of the members. And if I take a look and I focus on member AB here, and if, I, if I sum moments about end B equal to zero, and I say, boom, this is positive, and I'm summing moments about this point right here, I would get negative VAB times the length of AB minus MBA minus MAB plus the resultant of the distributed load, six kip per foot times 18 feet times the arm. That resultant is right here. And the distance from end B to the resultant right here is half of 18 feet, which is nine feet. So this is nine feet all equal to zero. And if I do some algebra, blah, 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 I would get this for the shear. If I do the same for member CD, I can also get the internal shear VDC as a function of the moments. And so this I'll do in orange. I would get for some of the moments about end C equal to zero. And this would tell me that negative VDC is equal to. And now I just go back and take these two relationships and apply it back to that equilibrium equation. Woo-wee, that's a lot of stuff right here. And here, this would tell me, if I substitute back in here, I would have, and this would be my ninth equation. And with these, with one, two, and three more equations, I have now nine equations, nine unknowns, and you can solve this massive problem using whatever algebraic technique you want to use. And that alone might be the hardest part of this problem. All right, so now we gotta solve these equations. And the thing you really solve for are the displacements or the rotations and the chord rotations. We got nine equations here. I've circled all the unknowns once. And so I have nine unknowns. And now it's just a process of going through and solving it. And one thing that always helps is to number your equations. That's what I'll do here. 
here and then I'll kind of just it'll kind of go fast forward right you could just watch how I do it I'll, I'll state what I do and then boom you'll just you'll see how it's done equation numbers I'm gonna number them one through nine and this usually involves taking a slope def set of slope deflection equations and substituting into an equilibrium equation so now if I substitute equations two and three into the equilibrium equation seven over here, this is what it's gonna look like. Just to make things a little bit more convenient, I'm gonna multiply both sides of this equation by one foot over EI. And I would end up with, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for with equation eight. I'm gonna take equations four and five Five and substitute into equation 8 and after all the substitution and algebra and things I'm gonna end up with and the most complicated one might be substituting to this last equilibrium equation here because I'm gonna need 1 2 5 and 6 into this mess right here and note this equation right here should have really just been 54 kips and if I multiply through by 18 feet, and now if I substitute into that mess, and if I take this entire equation and multiply it by one foot on both sides and divide it by EI on both sides, just to make it a little bit simpler and put it in the same form as all this other business, and now I've reduced the whole problem to three equations and three unknowns, which I can set up a nice little matrix for, which would look like this. Oi, and after all of this business, and I, I'm not gonna show you how to invert a matrix. Man, if you don't know that, you shouldn't even be in, in structural analysis. <laughs> all right, if you, after you invert the matrix and solve this out, shoot. And some of you might be thinking, what the Frick is up with the units, kip foot squared over EI. Aren't these all like rotations that should be in units of radians? And yes, this is a unit of radians because EI, if you recall, E has the units of kip per, let's say kip per foot squared. And I would have units of foot to the fourth or length to the fourth. And this would end up with kip feet squared which would cancel out the kip foot squared on top and therefore leave you in units of radians all right so those are my rotations and my chord rotation my rotation at b rotation at c and now all we gotta do is take these displacements substitute them back into the slope deflection equations and we have our moments we have our end moments and so MAB, using that slope deflection equation, it was, see, EI over 9 feet. If I go back way over here, this EI over 9 feet, this is that equation I'm using to calculate the end moment AB. And that will be times theta B minus 3 times the chord rotation minus that fixed end moment at AB, 162 kip feet and here if i look great you know i see the units the eis will cancel out and then i'll have a foot here that will cancel out the, with the squares and i'll be left with the units for a moment kip feet yay and when i work all that out this will tell me that mab is equal to negative 463.91 kip feet and here again, if I use the slope deflection equations, I will get that MBA just from substituting should end up with negative 110.45 kip feet. I'll leave it to you to do that one. Verify my answer in MBC from the equilibrium equation is the negative of MBA and therefore one positive 110.45 kip feet and again plugging and chugging into a slope deflection equation mcb is equal to and by equilibrium mcd is equal to, and last but not least the end moment dc and here all the negatives imply the opposite of how we drew it initially in our exploded view we drew all the end moments going clockwise 
to make sense with the slope deflection equations. And we're still in the slope deflection coordinate system, if you will. And so these negative moments indicate that our moments here are positive 463.91 kip feet going counterclockwise. And similarly for others, and now that we have our end moments, man, we can go back to the members. We can draw these moments in correctly. All the way, oh my gosh, how many pages was that? I, all right, I can go back to all these members, draw in the moments in their correct magnitude and orientation, and use equilibrium to calculate all the end shears and any axial forces if they're present. But I can do that and then also draw just, again, looking at one beam at a time, going left to right, draw the shear and moment diagrams. What's up? All right. Using basic statics concepts.